possible. So let's give her a round of applause. And Investor, uh, thank you too, Claudia. I, I accosted her at LACMA about a year ago, <laughs> and it took about that long to get the meeting, but every email of mine was returned, and uh, thank you so much. What I'm going to do right now is tell you the, the format of, of our little discussion here, which is casual. So we just did the welcome, and then I'm going to give you a very brief introduction about how we came to be here and what we're doing. And after they're done, what we always do at these meetings, which is we're going to do a very short introduction of each of us. Uh, <laughs> made fresh this morning. <laughs> you can feel free if you'd like to pass the artifact around when the mic is handed to you. Dwayne Paul, where are you, Oprah? There's Oprah. Dwayne Paul can come around with the mic and, um, and the artifact. Does there still seem to be a predominance in numbers of male artists, regardless of race? Uh, compared to female artists. So one of my questions was already answered, that was how does one come about becoming an, uh, a member of the Artist Council, and what is one's uh, responsibility and benefits in being in the Artist Council? So I thank you for answering that. My second question is, what is the process uh, in terms of outside curators for submitting a proposal for an exhibition? And would that proposal have to follow um, a set standard format? Is there an application form? Must it include a budget? And once accepted, how much autonomy does an outside curator have in terms of the selection of the artist and the artwork in that exhibition that they've designed? Which was uh, is there a curator or intern on staff uh, or anticipated in the near future that is African American? Um, what is the criteria or specific criteria that you use in selecting uh, your themes for an exhibition? And uh, what kind of candidates are, uh, are selected for the residency? And how do you go about doing that as well? I was born, my mother named me artist. I, I'm an art groupie, but I still see this New York Times art critic. He gets his article in the New York Times where a black educated art instructor or historian to write a fair appraisal of any of the African American exhibitions. Why can't it all be on one level equal? Why hasn't it been? We all know why it hasn't been. There's a, 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 a devoted interest from the Tate Museum in London throughout major museums, the Biennales, everything, to keep it separate, separate from the overall culture. It was, culture has to be all inclusive, and it's not. And and yet, the spokesperson say, "Well, I met someone called me. Of course, your friends are going to be white like you are." <laughs> So how is it going to change? This is the year of redemption. We've got to, got to. Women, speak out. For a stronger message in art, the, the, it's come to, I remember the shock of the new, that, that whole prediction that art would go to its lowest level of superficial, s stupid subject matter not meaningful, not earth-shaking, not... <sighs> yes, thank you, <laughs> Thank you. And then to close out with, uh, with whatever you want to say, but I want to first uh, have everybody give a round of applause. A big thank you. That it's that we're still in the same boat, and that we still have a lot of work to do, and we really have to get out there and do it ourselves, and demand that our tax money go to African American museums and places, and be withdrawn from places that do not support us. I, I, I still feel.
feel the same way I felt 30 years ago. Things have not changed. Thank you. Uh, do you want to have a favorite question? You want to make a good round table. No, no. As much as we can. Introduce yourself yeah. first. Yeah. Oh, I'm, my name is Bernard Oyes, visual artist, um, LA artist of 40 years. Yeah, uh, so I'm Lily Bernard, and I think it was positive. I am hopeful that uh, this effort will benefit us uh, more than it will benefit the museum. That is, so that the museum will not just merely be able to check off a box saying that they are doing community outreach, but that something more tangible will come out of this effort. Of course, studio visits, our work being exhibited in this museum and just a further deepening of a relationship uh, between we artists, we black artists of Los Angeles and the Hammer Museum. Uh, are you leaving with your questions answered? I, uh, I think I had a lot of them answered but I still also have a lot that weren't answered and I'm very grateful and thankful to the Hammer Museum for taking their time to address our questions and concerns. And please introduce yourself. My name is Michael Massenberg. It was very valuable. It's important to start a dialogue and also it's going to be important to keep the, uh, the doors open to find out what's next. There's a lot of key resources in the room and this obviously to make uh, inroads, we got to make sure that this museum and other institutions be able to have relationships with these, with these, with these uh, resources. I'm about people like like Samela Lewis, Alataj, Citrus Pondler, Eric Hanks, just Artist Lane. Timothy Washington. That's about, yeah. This is Jen. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. would you put this? I would point it, right now, for today, I'll point it as a 7.5. Okay. For what? And because it's the start, and for follow up, we'll make it an 8.5. Okay. Thank you so much, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> One quick thing an important, um, I think a very important component of this meeting was uh, the first part where we all went around and introduced ourselves within a 10 second span because uh, that was necessary for the Hammer Museum to see um, how serious and committed we are as artists and when we went and we just listed um, our credentials, our education, they were able to hear the amount of uh, time that we have invested in our careers and that uh, these, this is the caliber of artists who they have been overlooking. So what's the follow up now Lily? Well the following up is uh, more uh, discussions. I'm now going to be approaching the next uh, institutions of course, MoCA, Getty, uh, the um, you know the universities, uh, galleries, and then of course to ask for follow-up discussions with the Hammer as well. Thank you so much. Introduce yourself and then uh, what sure. are your feelings about the show? Hi, I'm Paul Von Blum. I teach here at UCLA, and I think this is uh, a useful start. But we have a very long way to go. We need to make sure that women, African Americans, and other minorities are not only represented in shows, but as part of the curatorial staff and we have a long way to go. We need African Americans fundamentally represented in the institutional infrastructure of this museum and throughout the entire city. Thank you. Where do you teach again? I teach right here at UCLA. All right. All right. Uh, please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Maria Cruz and I'm excited to be here in this forum today. I thought it was a really, it's a really great start to opening up um, just more diversity within our art community. My favorite question was diversity within the curators and I think that's really important because no one speaks more passionately about their culture than that individual and so having the African American uh, culture there, present within that tutorial position gives us an opportunity to speak more in volumes versus a referral. Thank so you Thank you. Um, we're just taking uh, a few interviews and asking about today's events. Do you feel like anything has progressed? Uh, what do you think? Do you think? And uh, certainly, I feel this is—it's uh, amazing. I mean, that uh, Lily uh, had the vision to do this, and I, I really did think that it was—it was a very uh, good follow-up through now dig this, and you know, and here what the a step one, a step, step one, definitely. Thank you. Uh, sir, what's your name? Introduce yourself and then just make a, a brief comment about today's events. It's a start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Let's... Uh... Okay. Danielle. My name's Danielle. Um, uh, so I was just interested in the question about the um, studio visits. Like, as an artist, I was curious about how um, artists are... Um, were those questions answered? Yeah, but so, uh, slightly disappointingly, really. I think it's a shame that, that the way it works is... Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, friends of friends or from suggested artists that already had studio visits. It, it kind of probably creates a, 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 an insular community. So. Thank you so much. Uh, please introduce yourself. We're just getting uh, a couple of comments about today's events and do you think your questions were answered and where do you think we, we should go from here? Uh, Stan Bruce, visual artist. I'm a painter. I have a business called Spirit Life Art uh, Studio and Gallery in Pasadena. I thought the meeting was very good. Uh, I'd like to thank the Hammer uh, curators and representatives for hosting us. Uh, I thought we made some headway. I thought we began to open up a, um, a discussion that needed to, uh, as far as um, um, enabling our community, African American community, to uh, be a part of the Hammer and other major art um, uh, museums. And it's always an honor to be here with fellow artists. Thank you. My name is Lisa Diane Wedgworth. I am a graduate student at Cal State LA. I'm a visit video artist. And um, I'm excited to be here. This is a wonderful opportunity. I think the first thing that I think, and while I was listening to everything, was the word access. And um, access on many levels. Um, us as artists, taking responsibility to having access to information. Um, one of the curators mentioned, or one of the complaints tonight seemed to be, or um, was about a lack of an African American curator. And if there are curators here or people who are in that field, all of those people, there should be no reason why we don't, if we're curators, know that they're hiring curators. That means doing your research. I think there's a level of personal responsibility also. Um, I also think that there's a responsibility for the hammer to um, do as much as they can it's to, yes, be diverse, um, but to know artists or to be aware of the fact that there are a lack of African American or Middle Eastern artists. But we also, as artists, have to understand that it's not just about having, it's not just about having a black curator. They can hire a black curator tomorrow who doesn't uh, represent Represent any African American artists for whatever their reasons are. It's about having a person that values artists and is open to knowing who we are. But then also as artists, we have to understand that just because I'm an artist doesn't mean that I'm right for a particular show. I have to keep working on my craft, making sure that I'm active out in the world and in the community, and and just un understand. So overall, what do you think? Uh, give it a rating from one to ten. What do you think today's rating would be for the event? I think it's a ten. Okay. I think it's a ten. That's excellent. Well, we'll yeah, thank you. With that, huh? Okay. What, were your questions answered? Were you satisfied with today's meetings? Any comments that you'd just like to have recorded? I'm Richard Turner. I think what you've done today is wonderful. Um, it takes more than one meeting, and I, I, I got to take it to uh, give it to the Hammer people. I mean, it was a tough grilling there at the end, but they stood up, and they, you know, the Hammer is one of my favorite uh, museums in town. You know, better than LACMA, better than MoCA. Thank you so much. And, and just creating a form so we can voice our, our interests and our concerns. And we just wanted to get a wrap up. Uh, well, first introduce yourself, and then also wrap up today. And what do you think uh, we can go from this point forward? And uh, did you learn anything special today? Okay. Um, well, my name is Emily Gonzalez. Um, I'm a curatorial assistant here at the museum. Um, and I think the thing that I kind of want to take away, and I hope that others take away, is that um, the meeting was a great starting point. I think um, it's a play. It is a chance. I think for faces to come together, um, but I definitely will remember at least a little more, if not completely, um, the artists who came up to me afterwards, um, and I do encourage them and everyone else to kind of come to the Hammer, become familiar faces, that way it keeps it more present in our mind who we need to follow up with, who we should check in with periodically, and it is, like Ali and I think Anne said, is it's about building relationships, um, and as a young curator, like that's what I try to do is start those relationships and who I want to work with in the future and that's sort of what I kind of hope everyone can take away is that we need to start building these more personal relationships and honestly these sort of large meetings are a little daunting. So, so how would we go uh, have develop these relationships? Is it uh, by attending shows? Are you at shows that are curated or how do you suggest we do that? I mean I 
prim I primarily work with the museum. I don't do things outside of it. But I mean, coming to Claudia's programmings, um, I attend most of the art-centered ones um, and a few others. Just like I said, coming to the openings, um, sort of lectures that we have. We have a lot of lectures, visiting artists a lot if you want to kind of hear what's going on with other people internationally. Um, but I, you start to recognize the familiar faces, and I think that's kind of how I think you show support for the hammer and things like that. Um, and I do. Try, I'm I, historically I haven't been great at doing other things outside of the museum just because of time constraints. I try to have a life. Well, you do well, but like, coming here today and uh, building the questions. You know, I mean, just being on the front line. We really appreciate you answering. Well, but I also mentioned that we do to one of the artists that we do try to keep a running list of what's going on around the city. Um, so if you send us information, it'll at least get on the list. So we when people look at like okay I'm going in this neighborhood what should I see they'll pick it up um, so I think just kind of it is that thing where just you kind of keep try to keep the lines of communication open thank you again for your time consideration and your support All right, thank okay. you uh, my name is Dwayne Paul. I'm a sculptor, mixed media sculptor, um, and I thought the event was amazing. I think it's a great that we have this dialogue going going back and forth. Well, the first of a dialogue, I think we should continue this because this is just scratching the surface. A lot of the, a lot of the questions that were raised, a lot of the comments that were made um, are valid back and from the front of the gallery and the back of the gallery, and these things need to be picked back on. Um, access is one of them. Um, the act, the the kind of work we're producing, if it's if it's um, viable for museums, if they're interested in those in the in the in the conversation we're having as artists of color, of artists of certain gender, of our of contemporary artists, are the conversations contemporary conversations? On, on scale of one to ten. On scale of one to ten, I thought it was a nine. A nine. Excellent. We want more time. We want a four-hour sit down and a back and forth. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. We just want to thank you, Lily. <laughs> we want to thank you for your passion, uh, for organizing this, uh, for giving us a platform to express ourselves and the representation that you've, you've given us all. So it's just a pure gratitude. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Love you. We'll make it one step at a time.